Okay, this time we have a square root completely in the bottom. We have to be careful when we divide top and bottom by the highest power in the denominator. The highest power in the denominator is not going to be x squared. Why? Because it's actually the square root of x squared. So, let's, let's talk about what we can do here. Let's first start with an identity. I'm going to start with x squared equals x squared. Suppose I square root both sides. Okay, well that means I want to get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared. Okay, so because I'm applying that, both of these would actually work. So, what you can say here is the highest power in the bottom is either going to be positive square root of x squared or negative square root of x squared. Okay, if you're going to, is x is going to positive infinity, you're going to use this definition, you're going to say that x is equal to the square root of x squared. If you have x is going to negative infinity, then you want to use this one. So it all depends on the way the problem is written, which one, that, which definition that you're going to use. So I'm going to use this one here, since x is going to infinity, that means that I can use, I'm going to use x and I'm going to use the square root of x squared. Those are both said to be uh, equal to each other. Now the top one I don't want to divide that by a square root because that's going to make the problem more complicated. The top one I'm going to divide by x. The bottom one I'm going to divide by the square root of x squared. Why am I choosing to use square root in the bottom? Because I can do some further simplifying because now, now I have a square root over a square root and I can simplify those. Because so here's what it looked like. The top one I'm going to divide it by x because technically that is the highest power of the bottom one. It's the square root of x squared which is going to be x. The bottom one, I'm going to take this square root, but I'm going to divide it by the square root of x squared because we made that definition there. So by doing that, I can simplify further. The top one's going to be 1, but the bottom one, I'm allowed to put that all underneath one square root, uh, just like that. So I can combine it all together into a single one. That allows me to do some more simplifying. I have square root of x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. I want to separate those. And then I'm going to get 1 over the square root 1 minus 1 over x squared. So finally I've taken it down into a point where I can apply this property as x goes to infinity, a number uh, um, over x to the power of n. This part here is going to go to 0. So I get 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0 and that means I'm just going to get 1 for the answer. So the, the whole entire answer for this one is going to be 1. This time we have 1 with a square root that's going to negative infinity. In the previous video I described all this. I described what kind of uh, thing you're going to be dividing by. Square root of x squared is the same thing as x, but depending on what this is going to, you're going to choose one of these two definitions. In this case, I'm going to use the bottom definition and let x equal negative square root of x squared. So when I do this problem, the top one I'm dividing by x because again I'm still going to use that left hand side of that equation. So all the ones on top I'm going to divide by x. On the bottom, because I have a square root, I'm going to choose to divide by negative square root of x squared. Again, why do I have the negative? Because it's going to negative infinity. We have to use that negative because of that. We're going to simplify. Negative 3 over 1 plus x in the bottom. I can combine that all together into a single radical. The negative will stay outside the radical. I have x squared plus x all over x squared on the inside. I can simplify further. This will give me x squared over x squared plus x over x squared. And finally I can break that down into 1 plus 1 over x. The 1 over x's, both of those are going to go to 0 because of that property. That's going to leave me with negative 3 plus 0 over negative square root of 1 plus 0. What will happen is I get negative 3 left on top, on the bottom I get negative square root of 1. Dividing that out, I'm going to get positive 3 because the two negatives are going to cancel. So that would be the the final answer for this limit, it would be positive 3.